Um, let's get started. As I mentioned, number 25 for me is the Texas A&M Aggies. Um, they lost a ton of their record-setting recruiting class, but also brought in some talent to replace them, specifically at the cornerback position. Um, and I realized this is a team that won five games last year, right? But this is also a team that is, from a talent perspective, top tier in the SEC, which therein makes them a top team from a talent perspective in the country. Um, so the potential is there for them to to be able to beat really any team that they face any given Saturday. Um, they also replace, uh, well, not really replace, but they bring in Bobby Petrino as the offensive play caller. Um, the thought is presumably that Jimbo's going to relinquish uh, those those duties. We'll see if that if that happens. But this team is just too talented uh, not to make a bowl again. Um, and, and that is our ultimate goal um, is making a bowl, hopefully making the, the college football playoffs if you're an Aggies fan. Um, but they've got to have some changes, you know, and, and I think that bringing in Bobby Petrino to, uh, to call plays will do that. Uh, I think Connor Wegman, uh, the talented five-star quarterback, kind of got his feet under him last season. Um, so him and, and Evan Stewart should should evolve and and create some more chemistry. Um, that coupled with five uh, five star running back Ruben Owens, um, who figures to be the starter at running back, and uh, a talented offensive line running in front of them. Um, and, and this is a a team in Texas A and M under Jimbo Fisher that hasn't struggled with defense, and I don't expect them. Um, to struggle this year either. Um, I'm, I'm really not even comfortable on a lot of these game, uh, on a lot of these teams rather in the, in these rankings, I'll give you a record, a projected record. I have no idea what to expect from Texas A&M. I just know that they're too uh, talented for me to um, not keep in my top 25 in some way um, as sort of a, a team that, that I project to really be a lot better and a lot higher as uh, in the rankings as the season goes on. My number twenty team is uh, is one that that you've already mentioned, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them. But it's Texas A and M, and I've got Texas A and M going eight and four this year. Uh, I I think they're, as you said, there's a ton of talent, and I think that they're going to figure out how to utilize it this year. Um, you know, they were really close to beating Alabama last year. They did beat LSU, um, but then they were just blowing it against some teams that really quite honestly suck. So Texas A&M, I think it was they had they had some guys that transferred out and I think there was a bit of a toxic environment going on and I don't know for sure that all that has been fixed or that it won't be somewhat toxic this year but um you know with Bobby Petrino coming in to run the offense, I I do believe in Bobby Petrino's offense. I I do and I don't think that Bobby Petrino would be at Texas A&M if he wasn't going to be able to call the plays. Even if Jimbo can't tell us straight up that he's calling the plays, I think that he will be. Um, you got Connor Wigman. He's obviously got to step up. That is the guy on offense, basically. He's got to shoulder this offense. Evan Stewart is a bad dude at receiver. Uh, Anaya Smith is back. Uh, Reuben Owens and a pl platoon of running backs will cover that position. I, I think the offense is going to be able to to figure it out. It's gonna it's gonna depend on the offensive line though. And um, defensively, uh, Texas A&M hasn't been bad defensively in a while. So um, I, I definitely like Texas A&M, and uh, I feel like I feel like. Eight and four is very attainable. I believe nine and three is possible, um, but I, I just don't see them having a a historically horrible year like they did last year. I just I don't see that happening again.